Thank you. Well, it's lovely that you were, you're able to return back to the um, to the birthplace of your father uh, to visit uh, Fukushima, and I was just wondering whether you could talk a little bit about that. That must have been quite emotional. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it was really incredible, you know, and I. I realized, as it is the birthplace of my father, he spent the majority of his life in America. Yeah. So it, um, he he longed for Japan because he was, you know, he's deposited at age fifteen with his thirteen-year-old brother, neither speaking English, in Kentucky at a railroad where his father had worked as a chef, and then his father said, "I'm going back to Japan to see you guys. I've taken you to the new land. There's new hope." Good luck. By the way, bathroom is how you say bathroom. Hello, goodbye, gone. So I know my father, um, he's a tough cookie and he managed to, to survive, but always longing to go back to Japan. Um, and then, and the opportunities, and, and now I go back to Japan a number of times I've, I've been to teach this work with a translator and it's, it's just, it's been incredible. And, Going back to Japan finally allowed me to understand my parents because I thought, why are they like this? Why are they so, uh, so, 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 so yo, I'm a New Yorker, you know, bring it on, <laughs> right? Yeah. Come on, let's well, stop with the humble stuff, you know, like, I got it. Yeah. I finally got it. And so I was able to go back to Japan and I brought some of his ashes with me because knowing he was really American for so many years. I just brought some of them, and, and I brought it there. But in the process, we also went to Fukushima, which was incredible. A people who have dealt with such extraordinary devastation with hope, with dignity, with reserve. Nobody's panicked. Nobody's mad. Um, they're not happy about things, but... They're, they're going to carry on. They're going to carry on. And I have these Herkimer. Herkimer diamonds are a crystal that is naturally found like this with 18 facets. They're usually double terminated. Well, these are anyway. And, um, and they protect against radiation and electromagnetic fields. So having researched this, I thought this is extraordinary. They also from, from the Wu energy side, they're able to receive energy and transmute it to the wearer or the beholder of it. Mm -hmm. So I enchanted into these crystals uh, seven Tibetan chants that I chant 108 times each, a whole bunch of Hawaiian chants, Buddhist chants, and some Christian chants as well, as well as my own invocations of protection and purity and cleansing and resolve and hope, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I brought these to the people in Fukushima who opened their arms and welcomed us with just joy and laughter. And they're not running around with the idea of, well, everything's going to be okay, because nobody has said that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has said that. And the government was running out of money and saying, well, that's it. We're not going to support you past the end of the year. And they're like, all right. You know, and whatever's going on behind this face of, we will deal with it, I can only imagine. But they're going to carry on with fortitude, dignity, resolve, and help each other. Yeah. Nobody, nobody gets left behind on this. Yeah. So I gave each one a Herkimer diamond, and I said, put it in a little bottle of water, fill it, and ch 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 spray yourself. And each person was elated, and you could feel the energy just elevate. And of course, I did energy healing on these large groups wherever we went. We went to a number of different places, and it was like yeah. every one of them was my mother, or my grandmother, or my grandfather, or my brother, or my sister. And, mm -hmm. and I could feel it. I could feel it. And um, and the fact that we came from so far to to say, you know. I get you. We, you know, yo cousin. Hey, what's happening here? Let's let's do this. Yeah. And and you know the interesting thing with the Japanese people, they are so highly spiritual. When you talk to them about this stuff, there is not one eyebrow raised like, mm, yeah, whatever. Some girl from America talking. No, they they are into it, and they're 
oh, absolute, the depth of their spiritual belief and connection, and oh, it, it's inspiring. It's yeah. inspiring. I was healed by them. Indeed. Wonderful journey. Absolutely. Thank you, Louise. That was. That was I don't know. Know. We'll squeeze up here. Yes. Thanks. It's all downhill now, isn't it, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, but I'd like to thank Kel for, uh, for introducing uh, me to, to Louise and for the interview, and thanks, Kel. And I, Kel, your journey is rather different. It is. And I was wondering whether you could give us a little bit of a background as to how you got into this, you know, healing work that you become... Sure. <coughs> I think... Sorry. No, it's okay, you're right. <coughs> yeah. I, as a kid... I remember looking on the back of my dad's car into the night sky and I always remember thinking there's something out there, there's some real magic. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was there and I knew I had to go on a journey to find it. Then life took over. I went to the city, I got into law, trained as a lawyer in conveyancing and then on the 7th of March 1991, Ooh. 27 years ago to this very day, well, I was walking up Fleet Street, six minutes past two in the afternoon, and my energy just went, got, I collapsed. Yeah. And cut a very long story short, from the 7th of March to the 14th of August in 91, I just become, I became totally housebound, I became bedridden, couldn't do anything. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, although I had chronic fatigue, no one really knows to be honest. And they're just labels. Yeah. This was a spiritual awakening for me. Mm. And I knew that right from the beginning. I knew that I had to go on a journey to forgive. And I went on that journey. I was dumb, I was stupid, it took me five years to do it, but I did it. And I knew I had to forgive my dad. Yeah. And it was through the forgiveness of my, of my dad that I healed myself. Mm. And it was amazing. In the process of that, after I'd been ill for about four years, I met a healer called Valerie Felgate. She lived in our village. I lived in a little village called Faxted on the Essex Suffolk border. And, you know, she came to the house and she got her hands up and I thought, what's this going to do? Really? What the hell is this going to do? So this was in 1994. And all of a sudden I remember thinking, what is that? I can really feel that. What is this? What is this? And it was really from there and over the preceding year, through into 1995, that I woke up. I became very clear in my mind what I had to do. Mm. I knew I had to do energetic work. I didn't even know what I was talking about at that stage, to be honest. I had no idea. Um, and like I said, I knew it was a journey of forgiveness with my dad. I did that. I healed myself. It was the most amazing, enlightening moment of my life to forgive. And yeah, I went on my healing journey. Um, and I gave my life to it, by Louise's life. But you were, you were sort of almost kind of bedridden for a long time. I was time, for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in that time that I, I became very much aware of energy, mm. of my dreams, of thoughts, of the illusion of reality. What is that? We're still not sure really. Yeah. Because there's only truth, mm -hmm. actually, and there's many truths. And basically, in 96, 1996, I recovered. I started off healing in our local village. And before I knew where I was, in 98, I was, you know, I was working at the Hale Clinic in Regent's Park yeah. and had a lot of you know interviews in the national press, uh, Times, Daily Mail, Sunday Times. And my life dramatically changed. And um, I was at the Howard Clinic for two or three years. Yep. Then I joined another clinic called Vivica in St. John's Wood, mm -hmm. which was the one, well, I think it still is really, the only clinic in London that was totally integrated healthcare. Yep. So it was from surgeons to acupuncturists, psychotherapists, to healers, chiropractors, osteopaths, you name it, we had it. And it was a clinic for women and their families 
we covered the whole spectrum. And that was the brainchild of Dr. Yehuda Gordon, mm -hmm. who, you know, I have to really clap that yeah. man because what he did was extraordinary. Yeah. And he stood up, stood out against the medical profession to bring everything in and make it normal. Were you having sort of any sort of paranormal experiences, or were you, you begin to tune into your guides and uh, this? Yeah, point and, and I, I, th I think that was one of the. I was going to use the word strangers. It, it was strange talking to people about it, but right. to me it was normal. Yeah. Because I'd I'd left my past behind. Yeah. And I remained very much in the present. So seeing guides, seeing other beings from other places. For me, it was normal. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Louise that I, um, when I was in Australia for the first time, I spent a whole week with another being, yeah. having the most extraordinary dialogue about this planet, about what is to come. But it was so peaceful, so loving. Mm -hmm. um, there is only, there is so much help out there if we can just open up to it. Yeah. It, it, it's not a scary thing, it's not a frightening thing. I remember you telling me the story, was this the Blue Mountains in Australia? There was one in the Blue Mountains in Australia, yeah. 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 when we were out, we'd been on a five day hike out there, yeah. and we were at about 5,000 feet, and I remember waking up in the middle of the night, probably to go for a pee, and I walked out and there was this beautiful being, she, I say she, she was definitely feminine, mm. and she was just blue, and we had this amazing dialogue and she was extraordinary yeah. and then it, again it occurred a few weeks later when I was out near Perth um, for a week um, in a very remote location down there yeah, um, yeah. and you know what, what was told there of, of my journey and this planet many of those things have come true because it's, it's quite good this is quite a good opportunity to kind of go down the rabbit hole a little bit because it's such a difficult thing to talk about in a way, yeah. isn't it? even now, I suppose, um, <clears throat> you know, this kind of integration and being able to talk freely. Um, uh, and by the way, I will, I will also edit it anything that out that you feel is inappropriate. Yeah. You'll, you'll both be sent a video yeah, to no, have a look at. Anything. But you know, it's so to be able to touch on this and be able to talk about this kind of openly now is is, is time, isn't it? Yeah. That, that, that you know. I mean, I you know, I, mean, I can't speak for Louise. In a mature way, because yeah. you've, you've gone through this but process. It, it's not, you're not. Yeah. But you know, I'm like, so impressed any longer in a exactly. sense that way. You're yeah. Not, and, you know. and, you know, and even from looking at that little boy who was five or six looking out in the back of my dad's car, mm. knowing there was something there. Yeah. You know, we are in a massive universe of universes. Yeah. There's so many different that we could be here all day trying to talk about this. You know, there are many, many, many different. Um, beings, beautiful people mm. from all different um, dimensions, mm. dimensions. Yeah. And I think it's a great privilege that you know we open, we open this. And you've said, you've always said, the veils are getting thinner, and the veils are getting so thin, aren't they? You know, yeah. all the time. It's like we're actually, if you allow, this is such a beautiful thing to say. We are walking hand in hand Absolutely. with beautiful beings that you know yeah. used to appear, but now actually we're walking with them. Yeah. Because you know, for all of our um, worlds, we fundamentally at our core we want peace. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. Maybe others don't. I'm not interested in others. I'm interested in what we want what we need yeah. as a race yeah. and to let these shackles go we don't need to be in fear we don't need to be in anxiety yeah. we're very powerful and you've suddenly know that like, i can't remember the word you use it's majesty or what, what's the word you use uh, sovereignty. 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 Yeah. sovereignty you know you know i've never healed anyone in my life i've been a channel for that mm -hmm. a conduit whatever you want to call it yeah. it's that person yeah. who's yeah. healed themselves yeah. We all have that right yeah. to come home to who we truly are as individuals, to be, in, in your words, who we really, really are. There's a, lo there's a lovely, um, I think there's a film just about to come out, 
about Ram Dass. Uh, and I think the title is uh, Walking Each Other Home, which is a nice. lovely title. That's a lovely title. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 I think Jamie Catter, who I've interviewed for the magazine, Jamie yeah. actually is, is, is working with Ram Dass at the moment. He's, I think he's mm -hmm. actually producing the film or directing but, the film. Um, and Kelv, you've been a, you know, a really, you know, very highly thought of healer now for the last sort of what, 15, 20 years, really, is it? Yeah, 20, 23 years. Yeah. And uh, what attracted you? I know you've always been very open-minded about mm. things and always, always, always. I, what, what attracted you to Louise's work? Oh my God. I, I can tell you. It was. I'd heard a lot about Louise, and I thought. <laughs> and I went to her first workshop, well, to IQM1, there's first workshop I went yeah. to. And we were chanting, well, we were, you were chanting, and I was, you know, doing my best. Yeah. And literally, it was in the first minute, this huge white eagle flew to me in my mind and just said, don't look back. Wow. And that was it. Yeah. And I think I turned to you and I said, I'm in. That's it. I'll do one, two, three, teach it, you name it, I'm in. Yeah. And I really think, and I tell you, I'm not just saying this, this lady has something which is so extraordinary. I mean, I've been healing here 25 years. Yeah. I've researched healing, I've read a lot about the great Russians like Spetsky, Gurdjieff, Blavatsky, you name it, I've read it. I've studied with Tibetan masters, I mean, no I have. Yep. Louise's work, I think, is the greatest, and I want to say this, is the greatest thing to come along in the last 30 or 40 years that will change the way that we look at health on this planet. And my words will come true. And I really mean that from my heart. And, and I know it because I've used it. Here's just a classic example. My daughter came in the other evening. She'd really hurt her knee playing hockey. Summer. Summer, my yeah, daughter Summer. Yeah. She couldn't run upstairs. She was like, Dad, I've really hurt my knee playing hockey. Louise can explain what we, what we do. I mean, but I worked on, it took me a minute, just mm -hmm. took me a minute. Her knee, inflammation, uh, tendons, muscles, blah, blah, blah. Within a minute, she ran up those stairs. Wow. And it's just by doing this, which Louise will explain far better than I might I. But it is, in simple form, it was erasing the blocks. It was erasing memory. Yeah. Now, Louise and I were discussing this on the way up in the car. We've, and we've both worked in this field, but I haven't used IQM, which I'm going to use next week, in pre and post op, op work operations we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So next week, I'm up in York. Mm -hmm. um, a client of mine is recovering from a um, triple heart bypass. Yeah. And then he's asked me to spend some time with him using IQM to invigorate you know, that, that healing process. And it's going to be an absolute fascinating journey. And this is a man who's nearly, he's nearly 80, so open-minded. Yeah. And he wants to go through this process because he wants peace. He wants to get away, you know, just let everything go, make his recovery and enter life. Yeah. What more can you say? It's magic. Yeah. It is magic. Well, that it's going to be, IQM is going to be in very good hands, isn't it? Yes. Louise? You know, and well, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, what I love about Louise is that, you know, she lets she lets you do IQ and then she lets you go. But it is her work. I know she will say it's not, but actually it is. Right. It is because, and let me tell you why, because it's the essence of her. Yeah. That is hand in hand with everyone she teaches. So there's always going to be that, that essence, that power mm. that's there. That's like a mum that holds that, that space, yeah. which enables us as practitioners and teachers 
to go out there in the world with her blessing. What can you say? IQM is, is going to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. And people are going to be talking about it everywhere. That's what I think. Yeah. Wonderful.